Good evening and welcome to the April 3rd, 2017 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Mr. Bacon, could you please call the roll? <laughs> okay. Um, Robin Saunders. Here. Susan Oglis. Here. Nick McGee. Here. Corey Fellows. Here. Roger Bailey. Here. Rachel Hendrickson. Here. And Richard Dupree. Mm -hmm. Got Absent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item is approval of minutes from the March 13th, 2017 meeting. I will move to approve the minutes from the March 13th meeting. I'll second. Um, we have a second. I will uh, abstain since I was not here for that meeting. Uh, all in favor? Should that be unanimous with one abstention? Thank you. And the next item, 3 East Grand LLC requests a site plan amendment review for a parking lot expansion at 3 East Grand Avenue, Assessor's Map, U22, Lot 123. Okay. Sure. Um, let's see. This is an application, as you said, for uh, 3 East Grand Avenue. Um, this application was before the board back in December, received site plan approval to, at that time, convert what was Conroy's garage into a mixed-use building, which uh, is a restaurant, a few smaller tenant spaces, and then a dwelling uh, on the second story. The property is in the TVC4 zoning, as well as the shoreland overlay. Um, and essentially what the applicant is before the board for, something they talked about back in December where they were trying to acquire the rights with an abutting property owner to expand their parking field, which would also then enable the expansion of the restaurant to the 100 seats they had originally submitted for, but had to, at the time of approval, sort of tailor back to the 72 seats due to the lack of parking. And now this expansion is intended to enable the restaurant to expand to the 100 seats, meeting the town's minimum standards for parking. Um, so with that, turn back to you. Um, I'll just note that, um, sorry, before I do that, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to staff comments, you should have also received comments from Woodard and Kern, um, who had just some questions regarding their um, drainage outlet, um, and then uh, a memo from Goral Palmer, who had reviewed the traffic um, report and has no further issues at this time. Okay. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to the applicant's representative. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions uh, here this evening representing uh, the 3 East Grand proposed restaurant that is well underway given our uh, initial approvals to this board uh, back in December. And as uh, Jay mentioned, uh, we're just here for a very brief meeting this evening uh, to explain a little bit about the expanded parking and go from there. Um, I'd like to point out that uh, things are win-win-win all the way around here. The Sox won today. The NCAA is on in a couple of hours. Dan Bacon's here is one of his last official functions. Uh, I saw some crocuses as I wandered in the front door. That's the first for the year. And uh, we're the only agenda item. So this is, uh, we're rolling here. This is good. Um, as, uh, as Jay mentioned, essentially we had uh, introduced this project to the board and got approvals there too that are from uh, back in December regarding a 100-seat restaurant, but as Jay also mentioned, uh, we were in the process at that point in uh, acquiring a lease of some additional land that immediately abutted our property, but we didn't have it yet, our property meaning um, Sue and Vins. Uh, so we ended up uh, sort of at the last minute tailoring that back, no changes to the design whatsoever, other than we wanted to limit the number of seats so we could get the approvals at that time which you uh, graciously allowed us, and we told you at that time that we would be coming back in the spring assuming that we could get that lease worked out. Uh, Sue and Vin have subsequently done so, and uh, toward that end we've been able to add nine additional spaces uh, contiguous to the restaurant uh, parking area uh, and the site, which puts us uh, at, or actually a little bit over, but we're looking for that those 100 seats, uh, just uh, up a little, uh, 28 seats from the 72 that we had approved uh, just a few months ago. So again, toward that end, it's fairly easy. There's no other changes to the site. Staff had a couple of comments, one of which was lighting. Uh, I would like to point out that, uh, as we did before too, there is a Cobra light that is on the uh, utility pole that is immediately adjacent to the access. Um, 
that and the uh, fact that the restaurant is really only going to be open during the summer season, summer meaning late spring, summer, and early autumn, during which uh, daylight savings time is completely in effect, so it doesn't really get too dark during the point, uh, the times that they're open. Uh, and of course, given that area, the whole area of that uh, particular section of Pine Point intersection is relatively well lighted in the essence of not really causing any more light pollution down there. We're not proposing any more light for this, this little blip of uh, <coughs> nine additional spaces. Uh, the other issue was a uh, the staff brought up was the fence. That fence is no longer there and we're not planning on doing anything in that area. Uh, that is a, uh, as we go back further into that area beyond the parking area, which has always been there, uh, but was owned by somebody else, is owned by somebody else. Uh, there is a lot of vegetation around that area that we intend to be able to leave there. So it becomes a natural buffer toward that end. And as Jay finally mentioned, also as far as Wooded and Kerr and the reviewing engineers had mentioned, uh, they just had a question about the additional stormwater flow from this particular parking area uh, not causing any redesign of the receptacle for that stormwater, but just making a note that uh, we may want to take a look at the size of the riprap that's there. We certainly do that, but actually this isn't really an increase because the area that we've now acquired by lease was actually impervious surface before anyway. Uh, so now we're improving it, we're paving it, uh, but uh, as, it, as we had noted and the DEP had noted in their permit, uh, it was already impervious surface, so there's really no issues as far as that's concerned. However, given staff comments and uh, would and current comments, we'll certainly address those. And uh, as the condition of approval, we should be all set uh, with that. So given that, I'd certainly be uh, willing to ask uh, or answer any questions, address any comments. And ideally, what we'd like to be able to have is uh, planning board this approval this evening with the condition of approval that as soon as the traffic movement permit uh, that Bill, uh, the uh, uh, traffic engineer who's with us this evening, in case any questions do come up, has indicated would be safer all the way around uh, to be able to have that traffic movement permit as opposed to the traffic entrance permits. The point being there is that that's probably uh, five, six, seven weeks out, and rather than coming back to the board once the permit is in hand, knowing that we're going to get it, we had a meeting with the DOT uh, just this past week. Uh, it's just a matter of timing, so as a condition of approval, we'd like the board to uh, approve this project this evening if possible and then just have staff review that <coughs> when it comes and we'll go from there. With that, available for any questions or comments. Great. Thank you. Before we uh, get to that, uh, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this if there's anyone who would <coughs> like to make any remarks. Seeing none, we'll turn to the board. Uh, Nick, do you have anything on this? Uh, sure. The um, the lease, you have a lease, correct, for the spaces? Yes. How long is the lease currently? Five years. All right. And, um, it is renewable. I, I guess staff, I had asked staff, if, if it doesn't get renewed, what do we do that they've now been approved for excess seating and they maybe lose portion if they don't yeah. renew the lease? Or so, so very similar to the prior approval um, in which they had two lease agreements that also had expiration dates, one being the DOT land, which is the principal parking sort of at the corner here, uh, East Grand Ave and, and uh, Pine Point Road, as well as the off-site parking up on Snow Canning. The condition of approval essentially stated that should either any of those leases terminate, that um, essentially they would have to cease operations until they come back to the board to revise their um, site plan approvals. So I would, I could foresee where if that were to expire, they might come back before this board and say, can we go back to 72 seats? Something to that effect. But um, staff, as part of one of the conditions of approval that I've developed, um, it's what's now seen as 2C um, ref is in reference to that. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Thanks. Thanks. Susan? Thank you. Um, I'm a little confused about the lighting issue. Um, I was looking at the um, April 3rd draft motion and got even more confused. Okay. Show me on that where the lighting presently exists. Uh, by way of quick orientation, this is East Grand, this right. is Pine Point, the intersection, and there's a pole that's right here that has a cobra light on it. Okay. And that is considered enough to cover <coughs> even the new parking area? We consider enough for that, given that um, 
again, the timing of the year, we're not open during the winter time. What are the hours during the summer time? Uh, it goes from the you need to, I mean, I'm sorry, but we really do need to have the person who's answering the questions be at the mic. Sure, I understand. Um, the people who are operating the restaurant will be actually living, or part of it, living above there, but the hours of operation, as far as the patrons are concerned, will start at 11 a.m., and then uh, the restaurant closes as far as uh, any additional food preparation at 9. At 9. Okay, I'm going to say that, you know, 9 o'clock is not that light at the end of the season. It just isn't. I mean, we've all lived here a long time, right? By 9 o'clock at night, I don't think that that's going to be adequate. I would, I would like to have that at least discussed again. Has, has the staff had a discussion with them about lighting, or am I just? Not since our comments went out that we identified that on the existing photometrics plan that there is and, no lighting. In and that area. said that on April 3rd, we said that lighting details are to be revised to ensure adequate light levels are provided in the expanded parking field for visibility and safety while respecting abutting properties. Was that including the lighting, the, the um, additional parking that was discussed tonight? So the draft conditions mm -hmm. were based on the staff comments. Um, and so yes, the draft condition right now based on what the staff comment was about ensuring there's adequate lighting in the area was for the applicant to revise the plans um, to be approved by staff at a later date. Well, if the board was comfortable with that. Or I'm not comfortable with that. Um, with with the, pre the previous parking, I was not particularly pleased, but, it, you know, it is, this one's off to the side and behind the building, and I don't know. I, mean, I understand, and if it, honestly, Susan, if it comes to that, we're happy to do it. Even something on the building, like that it has an auto off, you know? Sure. I, I would just like to point out that it is a halogen light. Uh, the Cobra light is a halogen light, and the furthest portion of the parking is only about 60 mm -hmm. feet away. So there's a lot of, it's not direct. Okay. It's obviously direct over the road, but the ambient light is fairly substantial. Now, we could put something over there. There's going to be a support pole on that side. And if we need to add a light, we can, but I really think that that might be overdoing it. Well, I'm not a great fan of overdoing light, but on the other hand, um, this is hard for me to envision just how much light there is, you know, ambient light and so on. I mean, it's hard for me as just a board member to understand exactly what's going to be covered. I'm going to, I guess I'm going to have to trust that what you say is, is true, and there, there is a poll there if we change our minds. Yes. If the if town decides it is not adequate, we can come back. Sure. Help me. Well, I think if the board has concerns, and if you, um, you know, as Mr. Fisher is saying, that, you know, um, if we want to believe that there is adequate ambient lighting in the area, and I think that certainly be possible, mm -hmm. um, I think the way the conditions written at this point potentially would could get us there in terms of um, uh, staff could work with the applicant okay. and their engineer to understand what the current condition is out okay. there, and if, if we're not satisfied, we could seek to have them put additional lighting okay. in. Okay, I'm happy um, with that. We'd be absolutely happy with I'm that. I'm happy think with the that. I think the okay. way the condition's written could provide that type of flexibility, um, okay. or we could revise it a little bit. And where are we with, with the fence? The chain, link, bleh, the chain link fence has come down. That's correct. Are we putting nothing back up? That is around the expanded parking field. That's correct. And I understand, and I do, I, I know the situation, and it does back up to um, essentially the edge of the marsh. Yes. So I can't imagine that anyone's going to go driving their car. <laughs> I, that's happened in my my uh, tenure here in in Scarborough, but I don't think it's going to happen there. So I don't have any real problems with that. Um, I'm going to have anybody, anybody else on the board that's interested talk about, um, in fact, it might be yourself, talking about the um, front of? Yeah, well, thank you. That's the word. Yep. Mm -hmm. So knowing that that will be handled, I will say thank you and move on. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, Jim, could you talk to us about um, the direction of, of runoff from the parking lot, the additional parking lot, where things are going? Certainly. Um, essentially what we have is 
parking lot, the overall area right from here is a drainage. There's a manhole that's right down in here, and then there's another one that's right over here. And then the town is actually going to be adding yet another one when it does the, uh, uh, the improvements along Pine Point. By manhole, do you mean catch basin? I'm sorry? By manhole, do you mean catch basin? Yes, sorry, catch okay. basin. Okay. Yes. Um, so the drainage for the overall area from essentially this section <laughs> of the property is coming this direction. So this as well, um, even though it's right next to the marsh, it's actually going to be graded, so it's coming right down here. And keep in mind, too, um, if you would, that because we're not open during the, uh, the off-season or the winter hours, um, you know, everybody always has you know, some questions and issues about, well, what's the potential for the freeze-thaw cycle and, and uh, uh, any potential black ice, um, but we're not going to be open during those hours or during those time frames, so there's no issue as far as that's concerned. Have you reevaluated, have in the original grading plan that you gave to the engineer, the town engineer to look at, did it include grading for that area? Yes. Okay. And um, is it fairly steep enough to avoid what's happening around the perimeter of the, of the parking lot so that we're, basically what I'm getting at is to avoid run on into the wetland area? Uh, that's correct. That's why it's graded that way. Um, okay. There's a very small portion at the very back end where the fence was that will actually just go that way because that's the way grading naturally goes. And are you going to it's coming toward the parking lot? Okay. And are you going to be putting any sort of like traffic protection or barriers around? Like it probably won't suit itself to curbing, but you know the um, the the concrete log. Curb that stops. The, yes, curb stops. Thanks. I yes. couldn't think of the word. Okay. So you will have curb stops there then. Yes. Those okay. are along the, all the parking area. All okay. The parking all right, and so um, the amount of area then that you're adding on when I go to the stormwater narrative that you included, on page one, um, sorry, page two, it says approximately 0.71 acres of additional land. But the pages after that, page three and four, say 0.071? Uh, it's the latter. Um, keep in mind, this is only it's nine spaces. Uh, that's about 1,800 square feet per space, and then you've got the, the middle section. Um, so it's only, it, I'm doing this in my head, off the top of my head, but the entire area is only about 3,500 square feet. All right, feet. and I'm, I'm sorry, I forget what, which, which is latter and which is former. So is it 0.071 or 0.71? It's point, uh, 0.071. 0.071 would be an acre. A fairly substantial yeah. portion yeah. of an acre. Okay, so it is 0.071. That's correct. Okay. Um, how much disturbance do we have in total between the new lot and the additional one? Has, has that been calculated, that new trigger or that calcul that? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, this is primarily redevelopment, but you're going to be coming and redoing parking areas and things like that. So have you calculated what your disturbed area in total will be for the two parcels? Actually, it's going to be we're decreasing the overall. If you're looking for like uh, disturbed versus no, I'm not talking about impervious area. I'm talking about how much you're how much you're disturbing of the earth, meaning pulling up impervious area and the like. So I would encourage you to to just sum that up and give it to staff because it, to just make sure that you're not triggering any one acre thresholds for construction general permit purposes, kind of a thing. We can certainly do that. We're Thank not you. even remotely close to an Good. acre. Excellent. Um, really clear. Yeah. Um, on the original approval, you did have a total disturbed area on their plans, and so it's just a matter of making sure that's updated for this. Right. Sure. That. And in that total area, too, Angela, if we could think about where the contractors' <coughs> laydown areas are going to be, because that's going to, that area there, we want to make sure that we keep them out of the wetlands and not infringing upon that. So if we could be thinking about that, where the contractors are going to lay down and do some serious staging or de mobilizing and demobilizing of equipment. Last question. Um, on page three of your stormwater management narrative, um, you, it, it, the, the voluntary remedial action program um, certification that's been provided for this parcel is referenced. Could, um, it says here that a copy of the VRAP document and the environmental management plan are included in this submission. Was it included to the town? Previously, or it was? Yes. Okay. 
if that you was actually for um, the con when it was still Conroy's garage. Okay. Um, they actually had it. It carries over to the property. Obviously, sure. it doesn't matter who the owner is. But uh, is, is the nature of that just specific to the tanks getting pulled, kind of a thing, Jim? Yes. Is it a typical tank pull? Mm -hmm. There's okay. I think that's it. Thank you. Yep. Roger. Um, I really don't have any questions other than I'm just kind of curious about the lease for the extra parking. Is it, um, does it coincide with the additional off-site off parking in terms of the term, you know, five years and? Yeah, yeah, so they were all five years. Okay, all right. But they're different owners, obviously. Yeah, sure. We're unlikely to, I, I mean, they were unlikely, but we're unlikely to lose this lease because that parcel of property is, um, it's not possible for the owners of the landing access it in any other way. They can't access it from the Pine Point Road and they can't access it from their property. So it's kind of a win-win for us to be together with them on that. Okay, good. Um, and the only other question I have is on the traffic movement permit. Is, is, um, yes. Are there any red flags there or is that just basically a pro forma thing that's going to go through? Um, I wouldn't say it's quite pro forma, but there's, re there's no red flags whatsoever. Okay. Um, we came very close to not needing it. But as Bill, who's, who's relatively conservative, which is why we use him a lot, um, had indicated by doing so, by having a traffic movement permit, that essentially eliminates any p points of contention uh, in the future going forward, no matter how much additional parking there may be anywhere in that area. So, so um, you plan to open May 1st? Is that what you, is, so you, so you may not, so you may not have this other permit by then. Correct. Yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, and regarding the uh, lighting on the, um, did I say I didn't have many questions? <laughs> <laughs> regarding the lighting on the park and the additional park, and I, I, I would like to think that if you, if there was a problem there, you would do something about it because you don't. You don't want an unsafe situation down there, so. Absolutely. The only other thing I want to say about the lighting is we're trying really hard to be good neighbors in our community. Sure. There's another problem here that's still turning the corner, but they're all cottages back here. And people all have condos. And the lights back here are over the top. So it's really necessary, but we're absolutely willing to do it, but we really don't want to put a car in the Okay. Okay, I'm all set. Thanks, Roger. Rachel? Uh, yeah, I, I'll go back to the lighting and the one thing that occurred to me is because you will have staff living on the second floor, correct? Um, presumably when they're done with work, they're going to be walking other places. I would doubt that many of them have cars. If, yeah, but they're going to be walking around. So for those purposes, the, the extra light, I think, might be might be helpful because you will have people out in the dark. And, and like I said, we're perfectly willing to do that, but this backyard is completely enclosed by the sun, and this is the recreational area right in the upstairs, and there are several lights in this backyard area. And there are motion sensors there. So they actually have a lot of lights in their own backyard area. They're the ones in the parking lot. So they have the recreational area. I still like the idea of of that of that light um, for the purposes of pedestrians uh, after dark, uh, especially because you do have folks living there. Other than that, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I think I'm going to pick up on the, the lighting conversation. I think where I come down on this is that um, while I, I I appreciate concerns about having adequate light, and I think that you know we can sort of wordsmith something in the condition of approval here that addresses that and provides the opportunity for town staff to work with the applicant to figure out whether anything more needs to be done and I appreciate the applicant's willingness to do that. Um, I also um, am always sensitive to issues of light pollution, particularly when you get down in the marsh and beach area, which is one of the few parts of this part of town where um, you can actually see the stars once in a while. Um, and as stated, there also are some neighbors there, and so that it's a whole balancing act. And I think at the end of the day, we're all pretty much on the same page on that. So 
Um, it really comes down to semantics to me in, in terms of how we word this condition of approval. Um, and when I put that forward here in a moment, you'll hear what I have in mind for that, and anyone who has any other thoughts can certainly chime in. Um, but I appreciate the applicant's willingness to work with the town on that and just generally be responsive to, to the concerns that we and others have had along going back to the, the original parking concerns and the willingness to consider doing valet parking if necessary and presumably this will, this uh, addition of spaces will, will mitigate that issue. Um, beyond that, um, I think the, the, uh, the stormwater uh, question has been discussed pretty well and we've conditioned in here alluding to that as well. Um, I don't think I have any other questions. I was going to ask when you plan to open. I think that's been answered as well. Um, that's more of just a item of curiosity. Um, but with that, I will put this uh, motion forward. Uh, I move to approve the site plan amended, the amended site plan of three Grand Ave, East Grand Ave LLC for the addition of nine parking spaces associated with a mixed use building previously approved at three East Grand Ave with the following conditions. Number one, the restaurant seating is limited to 72 seats until such time as a traffic movement permit is secured from the Department of Transportation. Number two, prior to commencing work in the area of the expanded parking field, the applicant is to revise their plans to address the following. A, lighting details are to be reviewed with town staff to ensure adequate light levels are provided in the expanded parking field for visibility and safety while respecting abutting properties. B, the note on plan sheet three under condition of approval, condition number one, will need to be updated to include reference to the lease agreement for the three acquaintances property. And C, address the adequacy of the primary drainage point located north of the proposed driveway. Plans may be reviewed and approved by staff. Number three, all prior waivers and conditions of approval from the planning board's December 12, 2016 approval remain effective. That is the motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Good luck. We have a staff report. I will turn to Angela and then to Dan to see if they have anything to report. I am good. Mr. Bacon? Uh, I have no staff report. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Administrative amendment report. Uh, nothing to report at this time. Right. Any planning board correspondence? Oh, is that like town planner's slot? Yeah. Okay. But that's I right. didn't realize that the yeah. name's been changed. Yeah, we changed the name to encourage all staff to participate. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Well, is there still would you like we'll to? <laughs> well, I, um, I guess now that my resume is complete and I've taken minutes and acted as recording secretary, <laughs> um, I think you all know I'm kind of moving on to a new adventure. So I just wanted to attend this evening and indicate uh, what a pleasure it's been working with you all and working for the town of Scarborough and um, you know working with the planning board, Long Range Planning Committee members um, and Jay and Angela and I'm, I'm really going to miss it um, and I've really enjoyed it and but I think you guys are very much in good hands with the staff that you have um, and I'm really impressed right now by the board makeup too. I mean you could just have a it's a diverse board, and you have good good balance. Um, some newer members, some veterans. Um, so I'm sure I'm sure the development community and the process will be served well. So I'm leaving the situation in good hands, but I just wanted to, to attend and thank you all for working with me over the years, some for just a short time and some for much longer. Um, it's been a good experience for me and um, I'm not going to go too far away, so hopefully once in a while I'll be working in Scarborough and see you guys again soon. So just wanted to say thanks and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so that's a good segue to planning board comments. And I'll go ahead and go first and just pick up on that and thank Dan for everything he's done for, for this board and for Long Ridge Planning Committee and planning in general and the town in general. 
I've been very fortunate that my tenure on this board has coincided almost exactly with when he when he took this position, and um, he's really set a great tone for for the rest of the staff and the town as a whole. Um, and I can say, having been on the other side of the podium in different municipalities, in different parts of the country, that um, uh, that Dan's professionalism and 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 the, the professionalism of the staff as a whole really stands out and compares favorably. And I think sometimes we can take that for granted, but uh, I think we should all appreciate that. And I know that people from uh, from outside of of this room and, and various applicants who've come in front of the board feel the same way and have, have, have said so to me. So um, thank you and best of luck and definitely happy that you'll still be somewhat local. Yeah, I'll be clear. Appreciate it. Anyone else? I'll second what Corey just said. Uh, yeah. That was great, Dan. Why is your chair? Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate all you. We really do. Wish you the best. I can't help it. I have to say it. Um, the town has come a long way in the past, what, decade, in an awfully long way. Things have just not the same as they were. We're much more um, professional, and I think we're more um, trusted and admired around the state and the, and the, and the, and the uh, wider community. And the work of the planning board is basically a lot easier because we know what we're dealing with. And all of that is relatively new. It wasn't always like that. And Dan has done an enormous amount to make it like that. We're a very professional group. I think that we come into a meeting prepared. We pretty much know what to expect. And if we don't, we, our, answers, our questions are answered. And um, we're a functioning whole. And there's going to be an enormous whole with not the W in front of it when Dan moves on. The only reason I'm not more upset than I am is because she's not leaving the area. And I would like to think that when we get to the point of saying, can we call Dan and ask him a question that maybe, just maybe somebody will say, probably not, but, you know, we can think about it. There's nobody who knows us any better than Dan does, so I'm going to miss him. I wish you good luck. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm new completely to the board, so I haven't had a lot of chance to work with you, but... Uh, from just a short experience, this is a very professional board and a very professional operation, and I've admired the work that has gone on in, in Scarborough. As a matter of fact, uh, when my husband and I started looking at towns to settle in, um, we took a look at the, the structure and the planning in Scarborough and where the town was going through the, its plans, and um, I'm very happy we settled, and I'm happy actually that uh, you've been here as long as you have to to help the town move forward like that and I'm sorry to see you go but congrats on the new job Brother? <coughs> first before I say anything about Dan I want you all to know I, I attended the first transportation committee meeting I don't know if, if that's going to come up at any time Oh, well, no, that's <laughs> 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 the planning board comments. It was basically just a summary of everything, you know, the uh, Eastern Trail, Eastern Road, and what's going on at 114 uh, Gorham Road and things like that, uh, because there's myself and uh, Chris Chiazzo. He's, he's a news liaison. Right. Uh, and so that was, that's going to be interesting. It's going to be pretty exciting what's going on. And Angela was there, and Dan was there. Dan's going to all these places to get all these accolades. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to mention that um, I first met Dan. Uh, I met Dan when he first came to town because I was on the Seiko board at the time, and um, I found him to be a very approachable, very even-handed demeanor about doing things. Um, what I uh, what I liked most is he. He was willing to show some initiative to do things, to develop strategies. Then he reached out to the community to bring the community around to, you know, understanding what, what his strategies were and everything. And and I think uh, that that was very good. That's a very good approach that he implemented. Um, later on, as as part of the vision committee, uh, which started about 10 years ago. When, when did you first come here? In 2006. 2004. 2004. Okay. Um, one of the things we we started to deal with 
was the uh, perception that many in the area had of Scarborough as a difficult place to do business with. And uh, Dan and his staff were instrumental working with the SEDCO, with SEDCO to really kind of turn that around so where now I think the, the uh, developers in the area as well as the public sees a much more predictable process. And uh, Dan deserves a lot of credit for that. Um, so I, you know, I, uh, the town's losing a, a real good, a real good professional, and uh, I'm sure you're going to do well wherever you are. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we can find a comparable replacement. So good luck. Thanks, Roger. And I didn't intend to come this evening to spit all these <laughs> praise and accolades. Um, yeah, but you did. <laughs> I think there has, you know, a lot has changed since 2004. Um, and it's. I think it's really about the team that we have right now, and I think the planning board has been experiencing that team for a number of years without me being here. Um, I mean, the planning board, Jay and Angela, um, you guys have it dialed in. You've had it dialed in for quite some time. Um, there was a lot of work in the early years to kind of get it in the right place. So um, I'm really excited about where you guys are and where you can continue to go with everyone here, um, Jay and Angela and Karen Martin's a huge uh, contributor to kind of a lot of the things you're raising, Roger, in terms of the development community and, and uh, helping shape projects in a way that's good for the project but good for the town um, and helping shape the ordinances in, in, a, in the same manner. Um, so I appreciate the, the comments and the praise, but I think the town's in a great situation really because of some of the things that I've done but many of the things that others are doing with me um, and then lastly I guess one of the things that I'm most sad about is you're about to kick off a comprehensive plan mm -hmm. update process that um, I think is going to be really exciting and kind of has the potential of taking the town to um, to the next level in terms of what you're working on what you're thinking about um, on, on how the town's growing, how it's being conserved, and everything in between. So it's, it's a pretty exciting time, uh, I would say, and it's an exciting time for you know somebody in my seat to kind of get oriented to the town. It's a great time to learn a lot about what people think, you know, looking backwards as well as looking forwards uh, at the local level, um, at the citizen level, I should say. And, but also with the planning board and all the various committees that are going to be really key contributors to that to that planning process, which I I know the planning board will be, um, and many of you are also on other important committees to to plug into that. So um, I just think it's a it's a really the next year or so is going to be really pivotal and interesting for for you all as the town really takes the the next next step. So. Um, thanks for the the comments and, and accolades, but I just wanted to, to note that I, I can't do it single-handedly, and we've done a lot of great things as a team, and I think you'll continue to see that. So, Thank you. I'll let that be the last word, unless anyone has anything else. Move to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you.